Good morning, this is Alex Bradley from Anything Geeky Review. I'm bringing you Star Sector today. I'm going to do a first impressions on this version, which is uh, version 0.61a. Uh, I'll probably do one or two more first impressions when they kind of do updates, first glimpses um, on each one, just to kind of show you uh, what the changes in each game. Now, uh, Star Sector is a, again a space simulating sim simulator. It uh, it focuses mainly around ship combat and exploration. It's got a very you know, quite a lot of uh, role playing aspects to it. Uh, it's actually a really good kind of uh, indie game at the moment, and uh, I just want to get it out there. And hopefully, there's plenty of other people that haven't seen it yet that can uh, enjoy what the game has to offer. Um, at the moment, it is in uh, I would say beta format. Uh, it might be not correct, uh, probably alpha format because there's not all the features there. It is playable, I haven't had any crashes on it. Um, the game has been out for about two and a half years I think. I've had it for probably two. It used to be known as Starfarer, so uh, anybody who has a copy of Starfarer will have a copy of Star Sector. Um, it's the same game. They've, it, it's Alex uh, who develops it actually, and uh, he renamed it. Uh, I think it was last year. Um, so let's get on with the basics. So it's a, it's a space simulator RPG slash strategy. It's got many different genres in there. You basically play a captain of your own little vessel. Um, you get to kind of explore. You get to fight lots of pirates. Build up your own fleet. Eventually, once all the features are there, you'll be able to build your own outposts. You'll have a running economy, and there should be a lot more sectors. At the moment, there's only two sectors, I believe, that you can uh, explore and fight in, and there isn't a whole lot to do other than fight pirates and and different alliances, kind of thing, and build up your fleet. But at the moment, that is actually quite a fun um, part of the game. It's got a really good combat system, which I'll show you as I get in. I think what I'll do is I'll just continue off where I left off and hopefully this should work there we go so quite a simple interface now this is the map as you can see there is a red group of pirates over there blue are not necessarily allies they're simply a different race or alliance so this is the Tritachion alliance and then I think the base I'm at is the Hegemonian alliance now uh, or it could be the Hegemonian Orbital Station, not sure which. Um, these two don't like each other, but they both attack pirates whenever you know, possible. Now, when you start the game, I would definitely advise against attacking these guys. You do not want to uh, piss any of the Alliance guys off, because at the beginning you start with nothing but a simple frigate, and that is nowhere near enough to be taken on even some smaller uh, alliance ships because they are much more modified and much more improved on than pirate vessels. At the same token I wouldn't advise taking on anything bigger than this fleet here. It has two frigates and a bomber squadron. Um, that will be difficult for any starter to uh, take on. Simply just left click and you can control your fleet. There we go. Now I have a frigate my crew destroyer at the moment is uh, looks like it's out of action. Combat readiness of 1%. Now, combat readiness in this is quite a nice little feature, actually. I've never come across it really in any other game. It basically represents the the combat readiness of your ship when with its crew. So if your crew has just been in a battle, then of course they're going to come out of that battle with a certain level of shock that's going to really slow down their performance you're going to have a lot of injured crewmen who are going to take time to come back up to full readiness your ship isn't going to perform as well because it hasn't had maintenance it's just been in a combat situation you're probably going to have some serious damage to your ship and all these things take into effect on combat readiness now one percent of combat readiness is awful <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, combat readiness of one percent. There isn't any point of sending the ship in into combat at at all. Now, as you can see from this ship, or combat readiness of sixteen percent. That is pretty bad. You really want something more along the line of thirty or forty percent minimum, really. Now, as you can see, the enemy's combat readiness is fifty-five percent. 
60 and his bomb was a 48. Now he's going to have a much better chance of uh, taking me on in this state. Um, I don't actually know whether I can win this battle. This might be a, a bad uh, scenario to show you, but uh, I'll give it a go anyway. No, neither of my uh, bigger vessels are capable of fighting in this one. So if I can't disengage, I can't, then I am going to have to uh, engage with two frigates. I'm going to select that one. Oh, let's pause this. So you've got two views. As you can see, I pause. There we go. This is the combat view. I don't know why I have my two frigates. I'm sure usually you get choice of uh, deployment, but it's probably because I tried to disengage first. I gave up the advantage doing that. Um, this is the combat view. So this is where you will see all the combat. This is where you will control the ship you have command over at the moment. Now, whichever is your lead or your flagship, that is what you control will control. Now you can change that within the game uh, to any other ship you have control. You'll have a little shuttle that leaves and it will go to your other ship. Um, that's pretty much it. You've got the usual kind of UI. Now down the side you'll see this is the, without scrolling too much, this is the combat readiness. This actually tells you uh, the chances of failure. So combat readiness only 16%. Weapon malfunction chance. I have an engine malfunction chance. Missiles not fully loaded a degraded performance and I have a remaining peak active performance time of 357 seconds. Now for most combat situations that should be perfectly fine. If you're in a bigger battle then of course you're going to uh, get slaughtered. Now the beauty of this game actually is this crew readiness it affects literally the entire fleet. It's not something that's quite small and there's a low chance of it happening. As you saw, my fleet is pretty in bad condition. I think I've just come out of a battle and uh, I haven't really given the guys enough time to repair everything and get everything up to scratch. So that is my mistake. Now with this battle, I'm going to have to live with the consequences. This, when it says malfunction chance, now there's a pretty good chance I will lose some function during battle. Now my crew will try its best to keep everything running, and if I do lose engines halfway through, weapons and things like that, they they will do their best to get them back online. But literally, it is taking all sorts of chances coming into a battle like this, and it's a beautiful part of this game because. There aren't enough games that try and simulate real life aspects of a uh, of a real yeah you know, that this sort of environment. Space is deadly to everybody, and there are far too many kind of arcadey games out there. This is a bit more simulator. It's not too much where it becomes uh, unenjoyable. It's actually quite an enjoyable simulator, but it makes you think. If you if you're willing to think on your feet, then this is the sort of game that you really want to love, because it's it's just got so much potential. So uh, as you can see, my fleet is lined up. I will show you the other aspects of this command mode. Is this where is where you basically command your fleets? Now, as you can see, there's two circles over them. That means they are not in any condition to fight, and they probably won't put up any sort of fight. These are different areas on the map which I can capture so obviously a sensor array will boost my sensors these are just nav buoys and a comm relay I don't know what a comm relay does uh, but I do think that nav buoys and these are basically command points if you control enough of them in certain battles then it gives you a bonus I'm not sure whether in later on battles there will be points or missions where you have to control certain ones to win probably most likely um, so, as you can see, there's nebulas, and the rest of the UI is pretty straightforward. You have a press uh, play button or pause button. As you can see, I've paused it. If I press space, it will carry on playing. Uh, we have our commands, so we can capture an enemy fleet or ship. We can assault it. We can rally a carrier, fighter rendezvous, rally strike force, rally task force, rally civilian craft, or cancel all assignments. Now. In each battle you get a certain amount of command points. This is designated by how skillful you are as a leader. The more points you put into kind of command abilities, the more command points you will get. For every order you give on this menu, you will use up one command point. Now when I first played this, this game was nothing but a simulator pretty much. You went in, you chose your fleet and you just battled. That was it at the time. From there it's covered quite a long way. Uh, 
but when I first did play it about two years ago, I didn't like it. I actually hated this game. Um, I bought it on a whim because obviously it's a space game. I thought I'd love this, and I tried it, and I absolutely hated it because of the command points. You had to control your fleet via them, and some of the bigger battles you, you can try, and you, you just run out of command points. Now I've actually got to the point where I can just really enjoy the game. It's it's obviously there's a lot more to it where you can wander around, and you can actually have your own little fleet and build it up over time. But it's the fact that they've. You know, it, Obviously, the developers changed it slightly to make it slightly easier. You don't actually really need to use that many command points. It's mainly just for major operations. If you need a group of ships to move, then obviously you need to use a command point. If you want to change their orders to just guard, then yeah, use a command point. But most of the time, your ships will try and do their best on their own. And a lot of the time, it is just wise to let them go about and do that. So, I think that's pretty much it. Of course, you've got Search and Destroy and Forward Retreat. You can pull in reinforcements if you've got any, but we don't at the moment. So, that's pretty useless. I think I'm just going to have to jump back in and hope for the best. Um, down here, we actually have our weapon loader. So, I'm sorry about that. Keep to scrolling. There's not much I can do about that at the moment. Um, the weapon groups are basically set beforehand uh, when you kit out your ship. So as you can see, I've got two light assault weapons guns. I can change using the numeric keys from, uh, so one is my uh, light assault guns, two are my missiles. I've got a harpoon, MIM, and a salamander MIM. And uh, number three are my Vulcan cannons. And as you can see, that Vulcan cannon is set to also fire. These two are not. So uh, missiles in this are very expendable. Well, sorry, not expendable as such, um, limited. You do not want to have to use missiles unless you absolutely have to. As you can see, I've only got one of one of each, each loader. That's probably because of my combat readiness, seeing missiles not fully loaded. But even when fully loaded, you're lucky if you get four missiles in each bay. Uh, you can get modifications that improve that, but it's, it's just not something you should rely on 100%. They're there to either finish opponents off or to give you that weak spot and give you a chance to you know, use your other weapons. Now, the reason why the Vulcan cannons are on auto fire is they are basically point defense. They will shoot anything. As you can see, there are different range circles. Now, there should be one point in each section and that's my Vulcan cannons. They will fire at missiles, fighters and if I get close enough to an enemy ship then they'll fire at the enemy ship. They're, they're just there to stop as much damage coming into you as possible and the, the idea of auto firing them means it frees up your choice, you don't have to mess with them, you can just get straight on with the game which is it's brilliant. Um, so let's swap back to my main weapons and well, we're going to have to just uh, do our best I think. Now, as I said, this is a very kind of simulated game, so flight isn't as simple as just uh, switch-based combat. You do have to kind of work with gravity. Oops. Both those ships have reported uh, issues. Your flagship is in danger of suffering malfunction. That's this ship. Oh god! Ah, oh, there we go. It's got nav boy plus fifteen top percent uh, top speed and plus twenty five percent manoeuvring. So where is this enemy of ours? Oh, it's over here, and I've left them completely behind. Lovely. Now, as we enter this uh, little nebula, I'll probably get some negative effects. As you can see, yeah, engine boost not possible and lateral motion dampened. So, have we uh, lost anything? You can see I can get a better view of this. My ship is currently engaging. There's I am going in the wrong direction. Lovely. Oh God. My poor flagship is in awful condition. As you can see, this has got one engine firing. I'm gonna try and gang up on this guy, which means leaving our fleet a little bit more exposed. The other thing in this actually is, is different kind of parts of combat. Um, as you can see, we've both got shields. Different classes of ships have different levels of shields. So certain ships like our frigates can only cover half our body in a shield. The rest of our fleet can usually have uh, a shield that's either much larger or actually smaller, but it can take a hell of a lot more damage. Now as you see, when I hit his shield, a bar fills up called the flux bar. Now firing weapons fills it up, especially laser weapons. Um, as far as some missiles, uh, we've had a ship disabled. Um, 
and obviously taking hits to the shield fills it up. Now when it's full you get an overload like that to my ship. It makes fighting rather difficult. As you can see I'm not being very tactful about this, I'm just going to go in and get the little ship because he's annoying. How oh, bad, I haven't really badly hurt him at all. Now combat in this isn't usually uh, quick, which is what I like. You really have to kind of use your weapons against the enemy, often using your fleet to outmaneuver the enemy. Now different weapons do different things, as you can see my, my guns simply fire in the same direction. I like simplicity, but missiles can do different things. They can either explode on the enemy as a normal missile would, or some of the uh, different ones can literally go around the back of the enemy and disable his engines, which is beautiful for trying to get the enemy in a perfect spot. I don't know why I've only got one gun fired. There we go. The second one must have been slightly disabled. And I have two chips fired on me, and they are whooping my asshole. My guns have misfired again, and I have now lost shields. I'm gonna have to pull out, of, pull out of this one, I think. What are you doing, mate? You've got to get in there. I need your support. I don't know why he's not firing on full thrust. Maybe it's got something to do with the combat readiness. I don't think he's uh, performing very well because of it. But the problem is, I only have peak performance for another couple of seconds. There we go. As soon as I try and turn around, the AI tries to take advantage of that. Oh, engine. Oh, shit. I lost my engine. I can't turn. Thank God for omnidirectional shields. <laughs> Come on. Give my engines back online. There we go. See, it's, it's ever so simple, but it really does add to the gameplay. I'm going to lose this ship if I'm not careful. There we go. Um, it just adds because, you know, losing your engines obviously causes you a bit of stress. You know, you're trying to manoeuvre your ship with less manoeuvrability. I'm going to lose this. I'm going to have to just, yeah. I'm going to have to uh, swap my command over to this other vessel. Transfer command. I hope to god that can't get shot in the middle of combat because that would be horrible. Lovely. There we go. Now this, this ship does have a lot more weaponry but it's not quite as tough. Plus does not have an omnidirectional shield, it has a forward facing shield and that's it. It's meant to face the enemy and that's all it's meant to do. Oh, that little shit is pissing me off. As you can see the ship damage lights up. It's trying to flux which is basically trying to get rid of all your excess energy. It's a quick way of getting rid of all the energy in your ship, uh, or your heat, which is basically what Flux, I believe, is. As you can see, we didn't do brilliantly, but we'll try and salvage what we can. Send out salvage teams after the enemy forces disengaged. 50 crew and no marines are rescued from life pods and in intact compartments. Salvage crews were able to sort basic systems in the Cassandra. Oh god, please don't mean that means I've lost a ship. As you can see, you raid as much as you can. What have I got on me? Please tell me I've still got my fleet. Oh. As you can see, I've lost a... Uh, I think it was a cruiser. And I've lost a frigate, which isn't brilliant because they're actually quite expensive ships. Oh, well, the frigate isn't, but that was my original frigate from the beginning of the game. So I'm a little bit annoyed at that, but that's, that's how the game goes. Um, Basically, combat readiness is everything. As you can see, these bars, this ship now has 4% combat readiness. Uh, it can only have a maximum of 22 at the moment, which is, again, dreadful. Uh, combat basically degrades combat readiness as soon as you enter it. So you want as high as you can possibly get. Anything lower, and it, you're kind of get, giving yourself a death sentence. 
Um, let's see if we can get back home, shall we? We really do need a bit of rest. There we go. 177 supplies for repairs out of 427. I think I can spare the uh, supplies. Now, as you can see, they're not combat readiness and they're crew under strength as well. Um, I'll show you the rest of the game. This is the character pane. This is where you level up. So, as you can see, I went up two levels. Um, I would have preferred to keep my ship, but again, that, that's the whole point of this game. It's it gives you the same sort of feeling that the original XCOM gave you, or UFO Enemy Unknown. It gives you troops, and then when you lose them, you really do feel for that troop. In this, ships are everything. If you've got a good ship, then it will keep you alive, it will fight your enemies, you know, you'll be able to command it. It means quite a lot to you, uh, each individual ship. And building a good fleet means you know, need to know each ship's strengths and weaknesses. Now when you do lose one and it's permanent, then of course it does hurt because it's a ship, it's one of your babies. Um, you've built it most likely, you've rearranged its weapon parts, you've customised it to the way you use it and it's probably for a hell of a lot of battles for you, you know what I mean? So that is that's something I really do like about this that many other games just simply do not have, which is a shame really. So as you can see, aptitude points are these down the side basically they're different feet or different categories of skill now actually putting plus points in them only really gives you some basic extras like 4% combo readiness so each uh, piloted ship will get 2% altitude level aptitude level so I think every time you increase that you'll increase that bonus now once you've increased that so I've got a level 2 in combat you can then put up to two points in each skill within that category so this one here is paragrid modulation it helps uh, modulate your shields and your flux so it means that you can keep firing for longer keep shields up for longer and shields take less damage um, so a little bit yeah, skills like this are very useful once you start building them up they each give you a small bonus go on to the fleet which I showed you a little bit of this is where you manage your fleet so uh, you can have I've never really had too much uh, problem having as many ships as I want so you can build your fleet up to as big as you want it it's mainly paying for it um, at the moment this vessel is only worth 9,600 credits and I'm sure I paid more than that for it but I could be wrong um, and it will show you basically the combat readiness of the ship what its maximum combat readiness is, what it is at the moment and different stats like supplies used per day and then it will show you the HUD integrity of that ship now I've repaired both ships so hopefully they should be as good as they're gonna get now this is where you customize each ship everything really is customizable except for very basics like life system life support systems engines that sort of thing you can't really customize them you can add hull modifications which often enhance those features but you can't actually swap them out completely the only thing you can really swap out completely are the weapon systems so on here i have two neutral slots which can be used for absolutely any weapon you can think of lasers um, kinetic energy weapons, fragmentation weapons or missile pods whatever you want to put on your ship you can even some uh, quite expensive and high powered reaper class torpedoes um, I don't think they're that high powered but uh, I don't think I've seen them before unguided torpedoes that's probably why I've never used them <coughs> um, and then of course you've got slots that go for only kinetic like these or uh, lasers or missiles so as you can see, I currently have an assault gun. It takes up 10 ordnance points, which is with this little bar at the top, 45 out of 45. So if I were to swap that to something smaller, I would get some points back, which I could use somewhere else. Or uh, if I wanted something heavier, like the heavy mauler, I'd have to uh, somehow free up some points. I believe those are the same, yep. I don't know why they were fighting at different speeds during the battle. Um, let's have a look at the capacitors and vents. Uh, as you can see, this is the maximum amount of flux you can take in a battle or in one go before your shields are basically overloaded so at any one point this ship can take four and a half thousand flux power basically power overload or heat overload to the shields or to the weapons now in giving you more capacity or capacitors basically increases that that higher limit so the more capacitors you have on the higher that ship can can kind of keep its power level going and the longer it can keep in a fight. Uh, vents basically do something similar 
but instead of increasing your maximum amount of power you can hold or withstand, uh, events instead allow you to dissipate that. It gets rid of the heat or the energy quicker uh, that you build up. So the more events, the quicker you'll dissipate that energy and, and you'll be able to, again, continue fighting. Now, a, a nice balance of both is really what you want in most battles, I think. Uh, if you do want something like, especially a bigger ship, you'll probably want something with a lot more capacity than, than dissipation but again it's it's up to you, your kind of play style if you want something that's quick nimble that can dissipate a lot of energy in one go but can't take a lot of damage then obviously if you get attacked by multiple enemies you're going to struggle but if you go on one-on-one -on -one with some big other vessels then obviously you're going to have an advantage you're going to be able to keep firing you're going to be able to keep taking damage because your ship can just keep dissipating it away into space uh, and again vice versa if you have high capacity you can take a lot more damage from multiple ships but you may not be able to get rid of it all quick now you've also got hull modifications as you can see I've got expanded magazines that gives me uh, I think it's ammo for my ballistic energy energy weapons. Don't know why energy weapons have ammo, but the charges ballistic, and so I presume they fire quicker and stabilise shields, which means they can uh, they generate a 50% less flux. Which, considering how much damage you take, is really vital. And of course, you can have all sorts of like, things like accelerated shields. Blast doors are brilliant for keeping your crew safe within doors, but again, it's five ordnance points. You've got a kind of uh, prioritize your uh, ships but you can see when you move on to something bigger uh, oh god my uh, Cassandra class has absolutely lost everything and I'm gonna have to re-equip her completely that's gonna be expensive um, as you can see 95 so she's a, she's a bigger bigger vessel she can take a lot more kind of capacity and you can add a lot more points in and make her a much nastier beast now the, the beauty of this is you can also manage weapon grips so you equip weapons I'll probably show you on the other vessel as it's got weapons equipped and you'll be able to equip them to either different points so if you want to be able to fire missiles on your number two key rather than firing on with your first salvo you can then select them onto the number two and when you select number two you'll then fire those sort of weapons if you want them to auto fire you just tick the top box and it auto fires whenever within enemy range so that is very useful the other thing that's quite useful on this is the amount of flux that your weapons produce so as you can see this shows each linked group of weapons and when they fire they're going to produce that much flux per second so you can, as you can see this is going to have four and a half thousand flux but if it fires its main weapon for one second that's 533 gone i can't even dissipate that in you know a second so you've got to really be careful how often you use weapons often trying to balance weapon loadouts with flux, flux dissipation is the best bet it allows you to fire continuously while being able to you know, dissipate the energy uh, which is good and the other thing that is quite useful is run simulating which basically allows you in your ship's current state to battle whatever you want. You can send it up against dreadnoughts or you can send it up against other frigates. Now it's nice just to test out weapon selections just make sure that your ship is still uh, as good as it's going to get. Crew and cargo is basically your infantry page. You've got uh, marines which are great for boarding your crew. You've got different levels of crew so a regular crew and then you've got green crew which are the rookies, veterans and I think I have an elite now elites are expensive and you do not want to buy them but when you've got them they're you know, much better combat readiness as you can see plus 80% rather than these are 70 I think a green is only 50% readiness so if you have a ship full of, red, full of uh, green crew you can only ever have 50% readiness on the entire ship so better crew, better trained and of course better performance as you can see I've also got a bunch of weapons stockpiled in my uh, bays supplies which are used for repairing your ship, food, clothing each vessel uses different amount of supplies per day fuel for getting around the place uh, not used for in-system travel but used when you travel between star systems I think that's pretty much it of course you can buy all your equipment down here show you the map so at the moment there's two systems I've only actually explored the one and the red dots are all pirates the uh, brownies are the hegemonians and the blues are the tritachyons 
So really you want to kind of play nice with the Tritachians and the Hegemonians. They aren't really aggressive to you at all. They'll usually lend their facilities to you. I actually prefer Tritachion ships because they're much more shield and laser based. Um, I much prefer that kind of combat style to ballistic, but it's down to your personal taste. Now this is a Cor Corvus Fringe. I'm not actually sure what that is, but I thought... Ah, that's a jump point. Well, I thought that was a jump point, but it's obviously closer to Corvus 2. So this is a star system, and you can go to each planet. I don't think there's much to do, but there are a couple stations. I believe there's a station over here for the uh, Tri... Tachyon fleet, there's also one over here, abandoned storage facility. I believe the pirates may have one over the yeah, hidden base. So you can go to each base, you can uh, exchange technology, weapons, buy you new know, ships, all sorts of little things. Um, each system's fairly decent size. You will have to fight for a while to conquer the little guys before you even think about taking on one of the big fleets, uh, but it's usually easy enough done. Officers and outposts aren't in yet. I believe that, that little outpost there is actually probably going to be your first little outpost when you take it over when the features it put into the game. So I think that's pretty much uh, the game. That, that's the game as it is at the moment, that is. Um, there are, of course, going to be missions, there's going to be a, a story, there's going to be outpost building, an uh, economy, and all sorts of extra things. And as soon as they get implemented, hopefully, I'll be able to do a video and show them off. This is uh, something special. It, it's not uh, the kind of space game you can get every day. <sighs> it tries to do something different and not the norm. Now, there are going to be people who play this and think, oh god, this is awful, You know, this is far too hard, this is far too realistic, and that's going to be true for some people. Now, for some of us who have been wanting something like this for quite a while, it, it's a godsend. You know, uh, something like this reminds us of a lot of what Star Trek games, Star Wars games, you know, many other kind of space games should be like. Something with a bit more realism to them, and I think that's missing in a lot of modern games nowadays. We're far too... Uh, we prefer far too many action oriented twitch based games this is kind of you know, throwback to the good old days where you actually had to use skill you actually had to have thoughts you know tactics plans you know it, it, it actually stretches your mind just to kind of combat normal everyday pilots the AI in this game is actually pretty good in most instances they won't just run into you they, they aren't easy targets even the smaller ones they will try and take you out that's their job at the end of the day so you know, to, fighting against them is quite a joy at the moment um, I don't think there's any multiplayer planned but to be honest I'm not bothered you know this sort of game you don't really need multiplayer you just want a good enjoyable game and at the moment it actually is quite an enjoyable game now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down the link in below for the site where you can purchase this and check out more information for yourself I've also got an interview coming up with the developer Alexander Molotov I think it believe, I believe it is um, and hopefully that will be on the site soon. Um, I will keep you up to date also on any updates when the game is updated. I'll let you know what happens and if it's a significant update I might do a video on it. Okay, thank you very much. I've been Alex Bradley for Anything Geeky Reviewed and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, first glimpse at Star Sector version 0.61a. Good day. Uh -huh.